Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Tensions are high in Sudan after the Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok resigned with the United States calling for the immediate return of civilian rule. It's after another day of mass protests in the capital Khartoum. Thousands marched against a recent deal he had done to share power with the army, who staged a coup in October. But military forces again responded with force, leaving two people dead. In a televised address, Mr. Hamdok said the country was at a dangerous turning point that threatens its whole survival. His resignation is another blow to Sudan's fragile attempts at a transition to democratic rule after a popular uprising led to the overthrow of Sudan's long-term president, Omar al-Bashir, in 2019. There was no monitoring of the CCTV cameras. A press conference has taken place to reassure South Africans after the country's parliament was severely damaged in a fire. Firefighters worked for hours to extinguish the blaze which started on Sunday. A man has been arrested and will appear in court on Tuesday facing charges of arson, housebreaking and theft. Particularly after we gave the arch what I would call the best send-off yesterday. President Cyril Ramaphosa called it a terrible and devastating event and vowed Parliament's work would continue. Iran has vowed to take revenge for the killing of Qasem Soleimani if Donald Trump is not put on trial. Iran's permanent representative to the United Nations has also urged the Security Council to hold the US and Israel responsible for the assassination. Ceremonies have been held across Iran and Iraq on the anniversary of the top general's death. Today marks two years since a US army drone attack killed the Iranian army chief and nine others. South Korea's military suspects a man who crossed the heavily fortified border into the north on New Year's Day previously defected to the south. Officials believe he is a gymnast who jumped the barbed wire fence into South Korea in 2020. It is not clear why he made the perilous return crossing or if he is alive or dead. North Korea has implemented a shoot-on-site policy at the border to prevent the spread of COVID-19. A midnight eviction of some residents in the Chinese city of Xi'an, who were later taken into quarantine facilities, has sparked concern on social media. Xi'an is at the epicenter of China's current COVID outbreak, and authorities have enacted drastic measures. All 13 million residents are confined to their homes and cannot leave to buy food or supplies. Authorities are hoping to eliminate the outbreak before Lunar New Year and the Winter Olympics in Beijing next month. Chinese real estate giant Evergrande has suspended trade in its shares in Hong Kong as investors await news on its restructuring plan. The statement to the stock exchange did not give a reason for the trading halt. Evergrande has more than $300 billion of debt and is scrambling to raise cash. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro and his team have arrived in Sao Paulo by plane for his hospitalization. It's after he suffered an intestinal blockage. The president's office said earlier that he had been suffering abdominal pain. Bolsonaro has been hospitalized several times since he was stabbed during his presidential campaign in 2018. Taiwan has been hit by a strong earthquake, causing water outages in some areas. Footage shows TV sets and lamps shaking at a local TV newsroom during the quake. Weather authorities said it measured at a magnitude of six. The epicenter was located more than 50 kilometers east of the city of Hualien. And finally, a video on social media shows people dancing and singing to celebrate snowfall in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> it is normal to see snow falling in Tabuk, where the video was shot, but it's less common to see Saudi people performing their traditional folk dance called a dabka in the snow. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.